Hey everyone! Welcome to this week's episode of See, See You Real soon. soon! We're back again! That's right, and a few weeks ago we posed a question on Facebook to our Facebook fans asking them to ask us any questions they wanted us to answer, whether it was about us or Disney or whatever. Yep, we get a lot of questions and we try our best to answer them, um, but there are a few that we've gotten a few times that we wanted to make sure that we got the answers to all of you. Alright, so we've got a lot of questions, so we're going to answer as many as we can. We have a list here and let's get started. Alright, what's the first question? Alright, let's see here. Alright, so we get this one a lot. It says, do you have plans to start a family one day? So, Joe? Nope. <laughs> yes. Yes, one day. Not quite yet. So, I know uh, every time we have an announcement, everyone thinks we're going to announce we're having a baby, but not yet. One not yet. day. Someday. Absolutely. And so the next part of the question was, if so, what Disney magic are you most looking forward to seeing them experience? We didn't think of this one, but there is a lot. I think for me, it's just like the interaction they have with characters. Yes. So just like they're like, when they see characters or stuff like that, it's pretty neat. I like seeing that when we were even down there now with other people's kids. Yeah, um, and I think too, in talking about how I enjoy seeing Joe plan the trips, I'm excited too when they get old enough to, um, you know, start to have their own independence and, and say like, oh, you know, one of them plan one of the days and another kid plans another if we have more than one. So, you know, having the fun of, of them planning the trip sometimes too. That'd be cool. Yeah. And another question we get a lot, what kind of jobs do you guys have? Uh, you may not be surprised to know this, but I am a financial analyst. I don't know if maybe the dining plan calculator or any other of the finance type things that I get interested in, but yeah, I'm a financial analyst. Yeah, and so I, for the past year, have been an admissions counselor at a college. So I have lots of fun talking with people from all over and helping them start their college career. On top of that, we both also our full-time grad students getting yes. our master's degrees. So, on top of Serial Soon and our jobs, we are both also full-time grad students. Which we love being busy, but sometimes that's why we always can't get back to people so quickly. So thank you for being understanding. Yes. <laughs> I'm going for my MBA. Yep. I'm going for my master's of education, educational studies. All right. What was your best yeah. resort dining experience? So, I, is that resort dining? Because oh. our best Disney dining experience yeah. is definitely the Garden Grill with Patrick. You witnessed that this last September trip. That was our all-time favorite. Yeah. But for resort dining... Resort dining. I know. I didn't think of that. Huh? We really, like, don't do much resort dining. I mean, we always love Chef Mickey's mm -hmm. for breakfast. It's always really fun. I don't think we've had any out of the ordinary, you know, extraordinary, which is the same thing as out of the ordinary, <laughs> um, moments at any of the Disney Resort dining experiences. I mean, we have eaten at 1900 Park Fair. We've done Ohana and Kona, which we, we've liked, but yeah, nothing kind of out of the ordinary. I feel like people ask us a lot about food, and we're not huge foodies, so we're probably not the best to ask questions about those. We do enjoy it, but usually we just get stuff on the go for the most part. <laughs> we also have very unsophisticated palates. Yes. I like, I'm a very picky eater. I like burgers and chicken. Pizza, and pasta. Steak. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Yeah, so. <laughs> but that is a big thing about Walt Disney World that some people love, and we can see why. All right, another one. Why is Pop Century your go-to resort? It certainly is. <laughs> it is, because we choose to go more often versus once and at a deluxe resort. Mm -hmm. So by going to value resorts, we can afford to go more often. And of all the value resorts, I think Pop Century is our favorite. Uh, we have stayed at Art of Animation, but it's a bit of a walk 
um, from the rooms to the food court and all that. So yeah, because you only can be in the Little Mermaid area. Right. Um, whereas, yeah, you have more choice at Pop Century. We like the food court there. We've never tried the All Stars. No, we never tried the All Stars. Um, so yeah, we do enjoy Pop. I think there was one trip that we decided to stay at the Polynesian, and we had kind of looked at the, at the end of the trip how much we could have saved and maybe in, and we could have used in souvenirs or eating and stuff by not doing that. Week. Yeah, and I think again for us, food and resorts are not a big thing. We're really all about the experience and the, the rides parks, yeah. and in the parks. So for some. They totally need to stay at a deluxe to enjoy the trip, but for us, it really It's just a place to sleep for us. Yeah. We didn't really use the pools. No, I know. We stayed for two nights or one night. Two nights at a beach club. At beach club, and this is so horrible to say, but we didn't even go to the pool. We didn't go to Storm Along Bay. It's crazy. It was like, oh my gosh, that's like the best pool, they say, in all of Disney. We didn't even do it, so. Yeah. <sighs> one day, maybe. How do you plan your days? So there's a couple of ways we plan our days. Mm -hmm. um, basically, it depends whether or not we have dining reservations. Mm -hmm. And I would say too, it's just changed over the amount of times we've went. We used to plan a lot, whereas now we just know the park better so we can go by how we feel because um, we know our way around, we kind of know the schedule, we know what when good places are go to when, so we can kind of do it on the fly. Yeah, it's really all in our heads. Yeah. We don't really write much down aside from if we have dining reservations. Yep. We, we don't plan sure. anything unless we have dining reservations. For the most part, it's, you know, we wake up Saturday morning, we go, where do we want to go today? Or we decide before we go to bed the night before, so we know how early to get up. Yeah. But, I mean, we don't really plan days in advance or weeks in advance or anything. Yeah. And we tend to not even do many dining reservations, so we really don't plan much. So in speaking about planning, one, another question was about um, what we think about extra magic hours. What do you think? Yeah, so I think we've decided that we don't like to go to the parks that have extra magic hours. We find that they tend to be a little bit more busier, and so in that way, don't end up saving us any more time or anything like that. Yeah, we go during the slower times of the year for the most part. So you don't really, need, or we don't really need to take advantage of the extra magic hours. If you're there during like really high crowd times, the extra magic hours can be a huge help. But for us, it's better for us to get to bed earlier or get a little bit of extra sleep and make rope drop at a regular park opening instead of getting up that extra hour early. Um, That's a really good point. During busier times, we probably would take advantage of it more. But right. When we, we went in it. July, the first time we went to Disney, uh, we went to a lot of extra magic hours. It was very busy that time of year and we went to a lot of extra magic hours. Yeah. But since we've been going in September and more off-peak times, not as much. And so, going off of that even more, what is your favorite time of year to go? Our favorite time of the year to go is when nobody else goes. <laughs> we love months. you all, but no. <laughs> I mean, just like, people in general. We love people, but um, yes, we like low crowds. We have the ability, not having any kids or not being tied to specific vacation weeks, that we can go really whenever we want. So we tend to go in September or October when there's lower crowds, closer to the holidays, but not too close to the holidays when there's crowds, uh, springtime when there's not spring breaks, you know, those times, uh, those types of times. We, we did go this September, and I think we said maybe next time we'd try October. Although, we were in line with a local, and they did say this September seemed to be an abnormally hot, hot September and muggy, so, and, and that was how we felt. And I think it was a lot that we ate a lot, and we were just like, ugh, <laughs> we just felt gross the whole so trip. so tired the whole trip. It was yeah. Very... So, this is another question we get a lot, which is, why don't you guys move to Florida? Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with the heat. Um, we tend to go when it's not as hot. We're not big hot weather people and Florida gets really hot for quite a few months. Um, we also have a lot of family yes. up here so we don't really, I don't know if we do well being away from our families. I would say that's the biggest thing. You know other things have kept us from doing it but the most is we have a life, we have careers, we have family up here so it would be a big big decision to move down there but it's never say never but for now we're we're comfortable here. Yeah. <laughs> Although today's really cold. So. I know. <laughs> but, and still going with our favorite time of year kind of theme, um, 
someone asked, do we like Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party or Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party better? And I think that's partly why there's a certain time of year that we like to go is because we like... The Halloween Party. Yes. <laughs> we love the Halloween Party. Yes, we really do. Um, I think the biggest reason is just so different to what you experience at Disney every <clears> other time. The villains are out, it's a different kind of theme, and it's just fun. There's something to do all night long, whether it's trick-or-treating, meeting the dozens of characters that are out that are not usually out whether it's villains or characters in their halloween costumes there's the parade and fireworks which the christmas party also has but i think the one thing the christmas party lacks is the when there's not an event going on there's not really anything special to do like when there's not the fireworks or the parade or the show at the castle there's i mean there's hot cookie and, hot cookies and cocoa or cocos <laughs> and hot cookie or nope cookies and hot cocoa but there's <laughs> There's nothing really else to do. Um, there are not really that many special characters. Our Uncle Scrooge is there and the Seven Dwarves. But, mm -hmm. um, I think um, another big thing is that it just seems like something you could do here in New Hampshire. You know, the music is Christmas music that we hear elsewhere. It snows. Um, yeah, it snows, bubbles, whereas here we get snow all the time, which is the real thing. Um, so I think for us, the Halloween is just so different. The music is just for the Halloween party that you don't hear anywhere else. So it's just a different experience. Plus, everybody gets to dress up in costume. Yeah. It's tons of fun. We just love it. I, you know, both, I think, people go either <clears throat> way, but for us, we're just big Halloween party fans. Yeah. Are you into pin trading or Vinyl Nation? Actually, surprisingly not. No, we don't have either. No, we don't do really any trading. I mean, Ashley does collect, well, just started at Christmas. <laughs> she got a, one of those pop things. They're kind of like Vinyl Nation-esque, but they're just so cute. And look at what it is! It's a cute little Donald! Cute. Joey got me this for Christmas. And I don't know if I'll collect them, but there are some really cute ones on there. So maybe I'll get a few, but... And uh, I do collect old cast member name tags. So I don't know if you saw it maybe in some of our really old, like, beginning videos. They were in the background. But um, old name tags that the cast members wear from like, I have them from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, today, from people from all over the world. It's pretty cool. Um, hard to find, but I, I like them. Do you ever plan to go on a Disney cruise? I have never been on a cruise. Um, and I think the one thing with Disney cruises that we leads us to not going on them is the thing that gets us most interested in Disney World is the rides attractions yeah. yeah and they don't really have rides on the cruises so i mean w would we go on one maybe maybe but i think that for now we're kind of addicted to going to the parks yes <laughs> yeah maybe in the future <laughs> it makes sense with a bigger family but for the two of us we're always on the go we love going to all the different parks so it's not quite what we're looking for yet also can you do videos at the water parks so we don't go to the water parks very often. We have gone to them. Um, I believe the last time we went to one was... September of 2012? September of 2012. Um, but we don't... We wouldn't be able to bring our video camera with us anyway because it gets wet. Um, so even if we did go to them, we wouldn't be able to video them. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a waterproof camera. Right, but we do enjoy them. We enjoy them. Um, we don't ever spend, I think, a full day at the water parks, mm -hmm. but they're a good couple of hours for us to just kind of go float. We did used to live on the lake, so the water was kind of at home. Now that we don't live on the lake, we might be more tempted to go to the water parks when we get down there. Mm -hmm. What model camera do you use? So we use a Sony D as in dog, S as in Sam, C as in Charlie. D S C H as I'm not gonna keep doing this. D S C H X 200 V um, camera. It's a couple years old. Uh, it's a digital camera. It's not a video camera. It functions as a video camera, but it's a digital camera. It does uh, 1080p video, which is uh, very high definition compared to most digital cameras. Which at least when we bought this, did 720p instead of 1080p. Um, but we use uh, a lot of memory cards too, so if you do plan on doing a lot of video, 
uh, stuff we use on our last trip in September we used eight 32 gigabyte memory cards so that's like almost half of a terabyte <laughs> or it's a quarter of a terabyte so it's a lot of memory cards so uh, that that adds up in price too so if you do end up doing a lot of video recording make sure you uh, plan the memory card part part of it and batteries too and batteries we use like four batteries um, which we constantly have charging we bring chargers with us to the parks and when we're sitting down somewhere we, we see an outlet we start charging <laughs> it's a lot of work to vlog but we do enjoy it and we'll put um, a description of the camera in the description below yeah <laughs> all right so there are lots of questions and of course it took us a little longer than expected for us to answer them so we're gonna make this into two episodes so I think we'll end things here for today and look forward to more questions on another episode until next time see you, see you real soon, soon.